My Hero Academia spoilers! There are a lot of them in this video, so if you didn't read it in the title or you just clicked on the video because you thought the thumbnail looked pretty, I have to admit I'm kind of a fan of that one myself. Uh, yeah, massive manga spoilers for chapter 213, so if you're not up to that point, probably not the video for you. If you're an anime-only watcher, this is really not the video for you, unless you just want to skip to where we're at right now and it's like, I want to find out what's going on with One for All. It's fine, I don't care, come on in. But uh, aside from that, I think it's, you should skedaddle. Okay, we good? Are we all set? All right, that was a crazy chapter, wasn't it? That was nuts. Not even from the fact of, you know, what we learned about One for All in the chapter, but just, I always like it when we see Izuku's inner world. It just seems like there's, like, this massive, like, sandstorm constantly swirling around in him, and he only appears as, like, floating body parts, like he doesn't have a mouth or legs, he's just floating there in the ether. I, I always like that, like, layout of it. But, okay, that's not, of course, the big deal. The big deal is, holy crap! He's getting six quirks! Count them! Six! One! Two! Three! Four! What comes after four? Five? Are we done yet? Hell no, because six! Six quirks. Now, this was something that, um... I, the, the idea of Deku having more than just one for all as his actual quirk, that, that's a theory that's been around for a while. I know Animac made a video about this a while back, a few months ago. It was like, hey, Zuku had a quirk, uh, and then it got stolen and before by All for One before he found out he was quirkless, and then later on he meets All Might and all that stuff to tie it back in. I've heard some other ideas that maybe Izuku had some type of quirk. It, it's just, um, its appearance wasn't uh, obvious. You know, it wasn't like a big powerhouse quirk. It was something else going on there. And, you know, I'm sure there was somebody at some point that hypothesized that Deku was going to unlock all of the previous quirks of all the previous users of One for All. Um, the only issue with that, and the thing that kept probably a lot of people away from that idea, was All Might's. All Might is the eighth user, and from what we've seen, All Might did not exhibit all these different crazy quirks. He had extreme durability, extreme speed, you know, super strength, all that kind of stuff. But you'd figure if all of these unique quirk users were going to, like, get stored in one for all, and you could just pull out their quirks whenever you wanted to, we would definitely see some more, um, you know, diverse abilities coming from All Might. But we didn't see that. So I think that kind of like, okay, well, you know, whatever. It's that, that, that might be possible, but All Might really hasn't exhibited that. And up until this point with Izuku, we haven't seen it either. Izuku's ability was always just like go full cowling, you know, just increases his base stats like speed and strength and stamina and all that kind of stuff, his agility. Um, never anything that was really different from what All Might did, just kind of on a, uh, a smaller scale because obviously Izuku cannot handle more than like 20% of uh, one for all right now. Uh, I, I want to give a shout out to a series called Flame of Rekka. And I love this because Anzai Sensei, who is the mangaka of Mare, one of my favorite isekais of all time, I even did a video about it uh, last summer. Um, his previous work was Flame of Rekka, and when I was reading this chapter on Manga Stream, all of the comments were about Flame of Rekka. Because the character in Flame of Rekka has an ability that's very similar to Izuku now. It's like he has to unlock certain powers as he goes about, and I'm like, that's that's crazy. I just love that people remember that series. I, I, I remember Mare a lot better. I, I haven't finished Flame of Rekka, it's a lot longer than Mare, but it, uh, both of those series are really good, and I would highly recommend them, okay? But I like this because it basically gives us uh, Izuku's roadmap for the rest of the series. Of course, the series is not just going to be focused entirely on Izuku, you got a huge main cast of other characters, but we essentially now have Izuku's main job, or focus, for the remainder of the series, trying to learn and subsequently master six different quirks, plus the abilities he's been fostering all Already. Like, he's still going to have the full cowling and everything like that, but he's going to have a bunch of other diverse quirks, like, for instance, the Black Whip that was introduced here. A completely different kind of quirk than what he's been doing up until now, right? Um, so he's he's not just the next user of One for All, he is the uh, finale, he is the bookend of it. So if All for One's brother was the one that started it and began to cultivate this power in the singularity, the core, um, the, uh, the analogy that the uh, previous user use the gunner guy, which we don't know his name, so I just gotta call him, you know, random previous user of One For All, or the Vietnam War vet kind of looking dude. Um, he, he likened it to, like, the, the core of a fire, 
or like when you throw a rock into the water, you know, the, the source of the ripple, you know, that's what um, the original user of uh, One for All represents, okay, so he's the one that started to cultivate the power, and then you go through uh, seven different users after him, and then, you know, the seventh user after him, the eighth overall was All Might, and then now finally you have Izuku, number nine, who is going to be the one to truly realize the full potential of it. Um, as the gunner dude spoke about, he's like, okay, enough powers have been cultivated in this uh, quirk for it to finally blossom, and you, kid, you're the one that's going to really figure out how this really is realized, how it's supposed to work. You know, you're going to use all of the previous quirks that each individual person had that are also augmented because of all the additional powers that were added over the generations, okay? This is a power that's been fostered since the very beginning of the quirk phenomena, so probably around 100 years ago, uh, or, or something like that. So, um... I like it, but there's uh, some problems that people are concerned about, obviously, when you just drop this all of a sudden, because up till this point, it was just like, Izuku's gonna slowly grow in like 20%. 30%, 40%, and he slowly gets up to the point where it's All Might, right? Um, so the biggest concern I think I'm hearing is after this is all said and done, and after Izuku has all of these different quirks, and he's mastered one for all, um, you know, not only All Might level, but he's going to even be beyond that, Izuku's abilities are just going to be broken as shit. Uh, he's going to have all these crazy abilities, all these quirks he's mastered, plus, they're not just the normal quirks, they're augmented from all these years of built-up power, so, you know, he's, he's going to be broken, right? The way I look at this is quite simply, yeah! At the end of the series, when he's already become, like, the number one pro hero, and the series is essentially over, and we're not really gonna focus on him anymore because the series is over, yeah, he is probably gonna be hideously broken beyond repeat. Um, but that's not, that's not right now. That's the thing I'm, like, saying whenever someone says, uh, he's gonna be horribly broken. And I'm like, no, not, not right now. We're, we're seeing Izuku's journey. And it wasn't expressly stated in the first chapter, because remember the whole of My Hero Academia, it's narrated by an adult Izuku. He's going back and recollecting everything. It's never directly said, like, this is the story of how I became the number one hero in the world, the, the strongest hero. I, I don't think it was ever said. I think it was just said, this is the story of how I became a great hero, or this is the story of how I became a pro hero, something of that line. Like, the difference is with One Piece, we know Luffy's gonna become King of the Pirates. Like, we just know that's going to happen. But it was assumed that Izuku was gonna take on the mantle and become the number one hero, you know, by the time he becomes an adult and he's recollecting this whole story, right? Um, yeah, sure. By that point in the story, I'm sure he's gonna be just incredibly powerful, way more so than All Might. But uh, that's one of what we're focusing on right now. We're focusing on him in his adolescence, learning about these powers. Um, now... It, it all depends on the pacing here of how Horikoshi does this, and I'm sure Horikoshi is fully aware of the implications of this just dropping it on us out of nowhere. Well, I guess it's not out of nowhere for some people, but just like, boom, he's gonna get six more quirks, guys. Strap in, because it's gonna be a wild ride. I'm sure Ho Horikoshi is aware of the concerns. He's not just going to make it like every other story arc, uh, Izuku's gonna completely master another quirk, you know? Like, okay, this is the arc where he masters Black Whip, then he learns something else, and he's gonna master that. Um, it's very possible, you know, he's gonna learn about Black Whip now, because uh, he already, you know, has explained to him and everything, he's going to utilize it during this uh, training, you know, exercise with Class B, but that's a long way away from mastering it, and a big thing that that gunner dude said was, these powers are gonna be controlled by your emotions, and I don't think he meant just his Black Whip, I, I think he referred to all the quirks that he's going to learn, you know, so anger is one fuel for that fire, but all these other emotions can be used as well. So you got to make sure to keep them in check. Being angry is fine, but you have to do it in a controlled way. You can't do, you can't do it like Tokoyami did during the training camp arc and he just went all berserk crazy. He lost himself and he, you know, his quirk went out of control. That could very well happen with Izuku if he just doesn't stay calm and just like, okay, deep breath. I need to control my rage or whatever emotion he happens to be feeling at the time. So he's got to get a handle on that. Um, it's, it's only one extra quirk right now. He's got one for all, like the full cowling, what we've seen so far. And he's going to add Black Whip in probably the next chapter or so. Um, but this is, this is going to be more complicated for Izuku. Because eventually he might get to the point where it's like, Okay, I've unlocked all of my individual quirks. 
learning how to use them and maybe changing in and out between each one and using them in a proficient way and making sure I don't hurt anybody, that's a whole other story. Like, this this Vietnam War vet gunner dude could have just been like, okay, Izuku, I'm unlocking all six of your quirks right now. Chick, 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 chick. All right, chick. I think I missed a chick. It's like, boom, done. You have all six quirks unlocked. Take them. Be careful. Um, even then, I think I'd be overall okay with it because he wouldn't be able to use them probably in a combination at first. Uh, if he did use them, he would be completely... It's a whole new set of... Uh, a whole new set of rules as opposed to full cowling and the shoot style from what he's been training up up till now. The black whip thing is going to require a whole new set of probably like martial arts. He's going to have to learn a whole new way of moving. So... This is going to be done very gradually over a period of time. If I was going to liken it to anything, and I know how original this is comparing My Hero Academia to Avatar The Last Airbender, because there's absolutely no similarities there, but Aang, okay? Aang had airbending at the very beginning. Then he had to learn, you know, waterbending, earthbending, firebending. Then you learn all about the Avatar state, and he can go into that. And then at the very end of the series, he's got freaking energy bending, you know, you think to yourself, like, wow, that's kind of an OP character. And, yeah, when Aang grows up and becomes an adult, he is pretty OP. You know, you can't mess with Aang when he's like this, you know? But that's not what the focus of his story was about. The focus of his story was just trying to learn how to use these abilities and learning what the Avatar state was. And the energy bending thing didn't really pop in until, like, the second to last episode. So it's like, whatever about that. Um, and then later when we see Aang as an adult in the flashbacks, of Legend of Korra, he really does look like, oh, he's a Billy Badass now. He's mastered all the elements, he's got energy bending, and he's got the Avatar state. Really doesn't seem like anybody can mess with Aang, you know, right? But that wasn't the focus, so I just, I just wanted to bring that up. He's like, yeah, if, if Horikoshi just rushed the shit out of this and just gave Izuku a new quirk that, and he just subsequently masters in each, uh, each additional arc after this one, then yeah, that would be going way too fast. And also, another thing to note, just because these quirks are stronger than their natural form because of One For All doesn't mean that they have to be, like, you know, you know planet-busting level things, you know? Like, let's say there was a guy in, in One For All's past that had the ability to shoot a laser out of his hand. All right, and, and you, I'm, I'm Beam Man. And let's say in the natural state of this quirk, that hand laser could, I don't know, um, destroy a car. You know, something, something like, like, like Goku's first Kamehameha when he first learns it. He's like, I could, I could blast a car with this. I could do some heavy damage, right? Okay, fine. But then it's, it's augmented through one for all, and the power is increased over the generations. And let's say by the time Izuku learns this, of course, the beam is going to be a lot bigger. It can destroy more than a car, but that doesn't mean it's like Izuku's boom, busting mountains in the distance. All right, maybe like, all right, now this beam is strong enough that I can take down a building. That would still be pretty strong, but overall, I mean, it's not, like, hideously broken in the My Hero Academia universe. Um, if Horikoshi did do something like that, where all of a sudden, by the end of the series, Izuku is firing off giant lasers that can level countries like Naruto's Biju Dama or some shit. Um, if he started to do stuff like that, then, yeah, I would, uh, I would be turned off of this plot development, most certainly. Um, but I think Horikoshi is a good enough writer that he can handle that. I don't think you have to be too worried about the issues there um something else that i've been hearing a lot of is uh why now how come izuku is is getting this power now we had eight i, I guess if you don't want to include the original the progenitor the brother of uh, all for one because you know it, he had the quirk but did he really because the whole point of one for all is stockpiling power and he started at zero, and he just kind of slowly worked up from there. So if you don't really want to consider him like a true user, just the beginner, okay, fine, whatever. You still had seven other people before Izuku that had this power, uh, one of which is All Might, who is the symbol of peace, the number one ranked hero in the entire like world, I would say. Everyone knows All Might, right? He's the pillar of peace. So... How come it didn't happen with All Might? How, how come it happens next up with Izuku? So, um, the, the way I look at this, and, and this is kind of thinking about how does the power of One for All really cultivate? How does it get stronger? Does it get stronger by the number of quirks, like individual quirks that get added into it? 
or does it get stronger just the more time that passes the more time that one for all is inside a host does it build up more that way does it have something to do with how much it is used like if you use one for all a lot um it, it, it will build up power more like how exactly does this work so here's the conclusion i arrived to feel free to disagree with this i want to hear your opinions but here's what i arrived to the number of individual quirks like black whip that get added into one for all that's more of just a side effect of the power it's just like oh okay you already had a quirk but here's one for all it just gets mixed in that's just how it works that is not overall a, a really big focus on it and it's just as a side effect those individual quirks like black whip are going to get stronger and stronger as you go about because it's just mixing together with everything else i think the key factor for what gets these quirks stronger and what increases the overall power of one for all is the time that it's inside a particular host how long it is and and how much is it is used okay so more of the the two latter things i brought up than the former if you take a look at the fact that there are nine current users of one for all and it's been around for about a hundred years when the quirk phenomena began uh nine users in a hundred years or so that seems like a lot it's very possible that many of these users of one for all they either lived very short lives like shimura nana she didn't live very long or they got their quirk one for all had it for a relatively short amount of time compared to all might who's had it for a while and then passed it on to the next person hey that's another thing important to keep in mind just because someone who passes on one for all doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna die all right now it's kind of up in the air right now with all might now we know this because all might didn't die immediately after passing the power on we we know it's not like you get one for all taken out of you and then you die afterwards but it, it's possible many of them might have like lost their lives like nana did and that's why they passed it on before that but it's entirely possible that there could be a surviving member of one for all beside all might oh yes i'm the fourth user of one for all and i had the power 50 years ago and he's just an old man but he didn't die he's still around he just passed his powers on and all the all the traces and vestiges of one for all have left his body and maybe he doesn't even have his quirk anymore um we, I, we don't know how that works because all might did not have a quirk originally so we don't know if it's like if you have a quirk originally then you get one for all and then you pass on one for all the quirk you originally have gets ripped out too it seems to be the case because the the vietnam dude in izuku's vision stated like our quirk factors themselves the things that actually are responsible for the quirks in our bodies those things get mixed in with one for all so it seems to be like it's like sticky tape it just rolls over you sucks up your quirk and then when you pass it on it just keeps rolling and just sucks your quirk out of you and then it gets stuck to the next person and that's just how it goes it's just all might and izuku don't have that problem because they didn't have a quirk originally um Right, so so just keep that in mind. There might be a survivor somewhere out in the world that maybe could tutor Izuku at some point, right? But in terms of the amount of time that's inside a user, I would say All Might has had this power for going around 30 years now. Because we don't know how old All Might is, how old Toshinori is. I like to think he's somewhere in his uh, early to mid-50s. I like to think he's a little older than maybe he outwardly appears. I know he doesn't have any gray hair or anything like that. But I think he's like maybe around 50 years old. Because All Might has been known all throughout the world far and wide for decades now. And they talk about All Might like he has a golden era and a silver era. And, you know, and, and we know he got the power of One for All from Shimura back when he was in middle school. We see him in the middle school uniform at least when he met her so he probably got the power right around the same time izuku did it just took him a few years to really figure out how he would use it and then he started his career as being a hero this ties back into the movie when we see a much younger all might and th th they talk about it with such nostalgia they talk about it like back in his early days when he trained in the states you know and we get to see all might in like his mid to late 20s in that movie so i like to think yeah he's in his 50s he started being all might in his early 20s about 30 years or so he's had this power but he didn't just have this power for that you know that period of time he used it 
probably way more than everybody else. I'm not saying Shimura Nana wasn't a great hero. I'm not saying Vietnam War vet kind of dude like, what are you doing over there, kid? I'm not saying he wasn't a great hero. I'm sure they all were. Um, but the thing, except for the original, because he wasn't really a, a hero, you know, all for one's brother. But everyone else, I'm sure, were great heroes in their own right. It's just that All Might took it to the next level. All Might didn't want to just be a good hero. All Might wanted to be like Superman. Like, known far and wide all over the world as the objectively strongest hero and the pillar of peace. Strength itself didn't really matter too much to All Might. It's not like, I want the whole world to know how strong I am. It wasn't like vanity. It was more of like, I want the world to know how strong I am so they know that they are protected. And so the villains know how strong I am so they know to keep their heads down and not start any shit because I'm All Might. So All Might... He's every day for the majority of his working career as a hero. He's really busting out all the stops here. You know, he's going all over the world, traveling about, you know, putting an end to villain organizations and shit. Um, and even up until, like, when My Hero Academia starts, he's still active. He's still doing his thing, even with his injury. And, you know, I thought about this. This is a really weird kind of comparison, but think of it like frequent flyer miles. Or, or think of it like uh, you go to a restaurant, you have like a little card and they punch holes in it. Like, well, this is your 10th visit to the restaurant, so here's a free plate of onion rings. And be like, hot damn, that's awesome. Um, but kind of think of it like that. Like, All Might had this power for so long, he started to accrue so many, like, all for one points with it by the time he was ready to pass it on it was like maxed out and that's why izuku is the one that's receiving all the benefits from like the the points that all might accrue just like here you go kid all for one is like oh you're ready to go it's maxed out um if it wasn't for all might being the symbol of peace doing his heroing duties as well as he did for as long as he did uh, it might have not have been until the the 15th user of one for all or the 20th user of one for all or beyond that where they finally accrued enough uh, one for all points in order to achieve the uh, the true blossoming of the power and it, it is only when you achieve the true uh, blossoming of one for all when you're allowed to use the other quirks, when the other quirks become available to you. So if you want the reason, and that's, that's another big one I was going to bring up, but it kind of just leads into it in tandem. How come All Might didn't use these other quirks? How come All Might wasn't busting out the Black Whip and all the other quirks that they had? He, he, the easiest solution I have is it was unavailable to him. He couldn't. He wasn't um, the one that was uh, there yet. Maybe, maybe it was like, uh, or in another sense, the way that we see how One for All operates it has its own consciousness, all right? These people can decide on how this goes to an extent. Um, and maybe the collective consciousness of One for All looked to Toshinori and they saw the state he was in, you know, he, he, he's out of his heyday, he's out of his prime, and also he has the injury. So they might have thought, like, he, he's, he can't be the one to receive the full power. His body just couldn't handle it. That could be another thing, too. So either it's like, okay, well, he's already maxed it out, but his body is in such a hor horrendous condition, it's not going to work. So the next person he passes it on to, though, clean slate, nice, fresh, young body, that's going to be the one that's going to truly master this power. All right. And it had to be someone. It had to be someone at some point. This uh, The whole point of One for All was, I'm going to stockpile power to make an incredibly powerful quirk. Well, at one point, is it going to be maxed out? At one point, are you just going to be like, okay, you set out to make an OP quirk. Well, four people in, eight people in, 15 people in. It, it was going to happen at some point. It just happened. The magic number just happened to be nine in this case, and Izuku was nine. If it was a lower number, I would have been upset. Like, if, if uh, All Might passed on the quirk to Izuku, and he's like, I was the second user of One for All, and you will be the third. Here you go, young Midoriya. And he passes on to Izuku, and he's like, you have achieved the full power of One for All. I'll be like, oh, wow, really? I'm only the third user? Wow, that was, that was quick. So nine seems like a good um, I, uh, number to me, especially with all the crap All Might pulled off. Uh, and we don't know any of the stories about the previous users of One for All. We barely know anything about Nana. 
You know, we don't really know how she fought or anything like that. We just kind of see her in flashbacks. Vietnam vet dude just showed up. There was the other really short, kind of cool Sasuke looking dude with his hands in his pockets. Uh, there was the really tall guy. Um, and by the way, this image that we see here, this is all, this is not in order. This is not like, because All Might is way down at the end and he's like all cloudy. He's like third in line. Uh, he's actually the eighth user. So this is not like in order here. Um... So it could be mixed up. Although I would assume the the two shadowy figures at the very end that Izuku couldn't couldn't quite make out. I would assume those guys would be the second and third users of the of the power, respectively, because they're way far down at the end. Uh, I, I would assume that's the case. Or second option, they might be like the dark history of, of One for All. Maybe One for All at one point was in the hands of a villain. We don't know the whole story. It's been around for a long time. All right, and even hey. Think about this. There was the time when All Might was explaining the the you know, the um, how it's passed on to Izuku, not when he first got the power, but when he was uh, after the fight with Stain, because Stain's quirk, um, you know, he had to you know lick people's blood in order to activate blood curdle. And All Might was like, I, I just wanted to let you know, you might be afraid that you know Stain is gonna have one for all now because he licked your blood. And Izuku's like, Oh wait, no, really? That happened? He's like, No, 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 no. It can't be. You have to willingly give it to someone. It can't just be stolen. However, there is kind of a loophole here. It cannot be stolen necessarily, but it can be forcibly passed on. So, for instance, let's say at one point, someone takes Uraraka hostage and they learn about all for uh, yeah, all, one for all from Izuku or whatever. They have Uraraka hostage and they're like, Izuku, willingly pass on your power to me or your girlfriend gets it kind of thing. In that situation, Izuku doesn't want to do it, but it's not like he, it's getting stolen without his knowledge. He would still have to be the one to be like, okay, fine, here, I willingly give you the power of one for all, but I don't want to do it, but I have no other choice. So it could be something like that. Um, so keep in mind, that could have happened earlier down the line. Maybe that's how All Might knew about it. Maybe the person that had it before Nana, the sixth user of One for All, was a villain and stole it some, or, or forcibly took it that way. And then Nana managed to get it back through a similar method. And then Nana explained it to All Might, you know, oh, this is careful about this because this happened through a previous user. Could be something like that. So yeah, those two shadowy figures, they could be the very like the second and third members or they could be part of it like in some they, they could be like the sixth member but it's just they're shrouded in mystery because we don't want to learn about them yet so yeah uh let me know what you think about this thanks for watching everybody i like this power and i'm waiting to see how it's going to be utilized all the different uh unique quirks that izuku is going to learn about and you know it's cool because izuku's a nerd it, it, you know, he's he's already filling notebook after notebook with how to use full cowling and his shoot style and everything. By the time he figures this out, like, he has all six quirks in front of him, he's going to be filling an entire compendium. Like, how do I use Black Whip? Okay, this would be great for Black Whip. This other quirk. Oh, this it's a water quirk. This is how I use this. Oh, this is a quirk that allows me to tunnel underground. How do I use this? You know, that would be something that you have to be smart in order to balance all of these together at some point. Um... It's a long road ahead for him. This is not going to be something that is just going to be in, in a story arc or two. He's going to have complete mastery over these quirks. It's going to take quite a while. But I have faith in Horikoshi. I hope you do too. This will be Techie 101 signing out. Later, guys. One for all.